Hi, I'm Noelle Hyman with PaperClipping.com, and I'm here with Julie Fafen Balzer. Hey, Julie. Hi. We are at the Crafters Warehouse. Yay, TCW stencils. Yay. Crafters workshop. 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 It's fine. Warehouse workshop. As long as you know there are stencils there, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, before we start, let's yes. look at this apron that you made. There you go, yeah. So I just took a regular black apron and I painted it, as you can see, with my big eyeball looking at you, my big abstract face. And then I did uh, my name here in rhinestones with using the Scan and Cuts rhinestone kit, which is kind of cool. A little bit of bling bling so you know who I am and nobody can steal my apron because it can only belong to Julie. <laughs> it looks really cool. Thanks. All right, so let's see some of this kind of creativity of going on with your okay, stencils. Okay, we'll so start. these beautiful babies are the new Balzer bits and the bits, I always say that they're small stencils with a big impact and basically they're masks meaning instead of a square format where you push the paint through they actually mask the image so they're all under four inches they're fantastic for jelly printing and spranks and all sorts of stuff they come in a variety of designs text and some more blocky stuff and one of the things I love is they made these faux letterpress cards and the reason that they're faux letterpress is because they have the same dent in that letterpress does along with the color and all that kind of stuff but I did it in a die cut machine and this one is really cool because what I did is I stamped on top of the house bit the red pattern that you see after I had already inked it with the yellow sandwiched it together with a silicone sheet put it right through my die cut machine and boom it pressed the design in and transferred that really cool pattern so that's a great way to use your bits and really make a really professional clean looking thing you know I'm not a clean person at all <laughs> and then of course you can go crazy with all of your spraying spray paints and all sorts of stuff on your layouts doing some really cool stuff I love this this I just used a pen and I outlined some of the bits, and I think people forget that stencils were originally tracing templates, not just for using with paint and ink, and that's a great way to use them as well. Now, okay, I'm gonna nerd out about this one because I just <laughs> like it so much, but you can see right here, this one I used two different bits. There's a flower, and they're sort of a viney leaf shape, but look at these. So either you can trace the bit, and then you can cut it out, or if you have like a scanning cut like I do, you can put a black piece of paper behind it, you can scan it in and you can cut it out, which is really cool. Of course, I will say just commercially for me, like buy it and then do that with it. Otherwise, you know, it's kind of weird and scary that you're just like taking a design. Okay. Taking a design and there you go. scanning your own. Exactly. I, I want to point out that's this one because it's yes. really pretty, the leafy branch bit. Thank you, it's really cute. Is that the eye that you, what's not, oh, it's, that's oh, not it's this similar. eye, it's a different eye. Actually, yeah. that eye is here on a gold tag. Oh. I'm kind of eye obsessed right now you know I went through a whole faces phase and now it's like everything's about like eyes eyes it's kind of creepy actually but I love the eyes all right let's look at the bigger. okay so now the bigger stencils which as always come in both 12 by 12 and 6 by 6 and you can see here that again you're the boss of your stencils and I truly try really hard in all my samples to show that you know you can do whatever you want so like here I've mixed together two different stencils this is both a text stencil in two different sizes you can see the two different sizes here along with this like circle stencil that you can see here with the flowers but look I also cut the pieces out because again you're the boss of your stencil you get to decide how much of it you want to use and how you want to use it and if you're really clever you can see that in molding paste under here actually the text stencil is here as well just adding a little more texture to the piece which is kind of cool, cool. now jelly printing is such all the rage now right mm. i have you tried it well, no, i see I your face it. you look I'm scared like, i'm like i know i've heard no, of it well, but i can't think once you of try it. jelly printing i swear your life will change jelly okay. printing is like my hands down my favorite thing on earth and i'm even really? talking about like i love it more than my mother who's well, over there so just shh don't tell her, don't tell her. Anyway, okay, so this background was jelly printed using the stencil that you can see right next to it. And you can see you get the border, you get all these wonderful variegated colors in here. You know, it's just a really great way of getting a clean, crisp, look at these lines, they're so crisp. Yeah. And that's because the jelly plate allows you to do that and it's so much faster than like spending hours with your cosmetic sponge dabbing up and down, you know? Uh. And then this actually, this background here was also jelly printed, but here's the thing, you can do it in multiple passes. So I printed the different colors, each in separate passes through the pod stencil that you see there. And that is how you get all those different colors and that really cool textured background. And um, by the way, I have to say, this embellishment is something I made for a layout 100,000 years ago and it didn't work and I saved it and I finally used yay. it. I <laughs> love that one. <laughs> So one of the things that I really like about this layout here is, so this is just two stencils. First of all, you can see there's an overall sprayed background, right, which is the stencil over here. But I think my new favorite stencil from the whole line, if I were gonna buy one stencil, would be this one. 
And you think, Julie, why? And that's because it's so versatile. Because what you can see is, I added it here as tons of little embellishments using both sizes of the stencil. You can see like the big pluses here and the small ones here. And it just adds so much. It's like having a lot, ton of stamps with you, except uh -huh. that it's a little paper thin stencil. Super duper easy to do. Cool. And then that title is my handwriting, by the way, cut out with a scanning oh, cut, because you know I love doing that. Good job. Really cool. <laughs> Okay, so this layout here is this really cool flower background which you can tile so that it fills an entire sheet. Really cool. I Super love that. Easy. Me too. I like flowers so much. I feel like everybody does. Yeah, and, and those colors are gorgeous. I love the pinks and oranges together. Where, where's that building? Where are you? That's in San Francisco uh, at the Legion of Honor, actually. But it's a really cool building, isn't it? Yeah. I was amazed we got managed to get everybody out of the photo other than me. Oh, <laughs> it's gorgeous. Yeah. And I love that stencil. Oh, that's Thanks. Good. Oh, right. no, well, you can come by anytime. Okay, so the stencil I'm actually going to show you how to use, though, is this one here. So this stencil you can see has four faces on it. And one of the questions I get asked all the time is people want to draw faces. And there are lots of stencils out there where you can put a face on, but there aren't a lot that'll help you really be able to be the artist that you want and customize the face. So if you look at that, all of these samples, I mean, look how different these faces are. And they're all created from the same stencil because you can apply your style of creating whatever it may be. And also a multiracial, all sorts of things that are really important to me personally as an interracial, biracial person, you know, uh -huh. and different styles and stuff so that you really can learn how to draw a face and get the results that you want. So I'm going to show you how easy that is to do. All right. Okay. Coming over to the little crafting table. Yeah, the crafting table. Okay, so I don't have my normal supplies with me, which threw me for a loop for a minute. So we're going to use some different supplies than I normally do. Okay. So I did a sort of messy background here with a bunch of different stencils. And don't be afraid to just mix it up. Different supplies. We used Distress Ink. We used a bunch of different kinds of sprays and stuff like that. I just started playing around. And then you can see here, this is one of the faces stenciled right on here, okay? But what I like to do is I don't like it to have it just be plain on there. What I do in my art journal all the time is I put it on top of something else. And I think it's really cool the way that a face looks on top of a pattern. So actually what I'm gonna use to do this is kind of an unusual tool. This is this little uh, fantastic brush tip like spongy thing. And I'm actually gonna use some spray ink here. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shake it up to make sure that it's mixed. And I'm gonna pull that out. And I'm gonna dip this in and it's gonna suck up some of that. And then I'm just gonna lightly rub it in here and it becomes like a marker or a pen. So that's just another way to use all your inks and stuff. And, and the reason I'm doing it this way is because if I sprayed it, I would probably get lots of the other faces that are on here. And I might get a slightly more diffuse look. And I want a nice dark look. And this is going to give me a really dark look and pretty neat as well. So I'm going to go ahead. Now, if I use a ton of liquid on here, it'll get a little messy because the, I've said this a thousand times, the enemy of stenciling is always going to be some water because that's going to get roll under. Whereas the the less water you have, the more neat the image is going to be. So I have stenciled this. Are you ready to see what it looks like? <laughs> I'm ready. So I'm going to pull it off, uh... and there it is, the face. Now you're like, OK, I sort of see part of a face. What do you do now? <laughs> Well, I'm so glad that you asked. <laughs> so you can just close up any of these little places that look like stenciling, right? And I'm doing this upside down, which is a little bit awkward. I'm not going to lie. So we'll see how this face ends up looking. <laughs> um, you can finish out the head, and you can add on whatever kind of hair that you would like to add on to her, like so. I'm doing this upside down. I apologize if it's weird. You can add, you know, your neck on. She can have, like, a high little ruffly shirt and come into her shoulder here. You can give her a smile by turning it up here. You know, you can color her eyes in. You can give her some bangs if she needs some bangs. But again, this is the thing, which is I really wanted to create something that was versatile and customizable so that you weren't stuck with the same design over and over. You could use these stencils every day and constantly have a different face emerge. Yeah. And then, personally, what I would do is I would take a darker color, like maybe some Distress Ink, and I would just go around on the outside. That's not quite dark enough. I would really use paint. I just don't have any. And I would block it out so that what you really see is this cool face. Do some highlighting. Customize it. Make your own. Do we look like twins? You are so similar. <laughs> I think my lips are that pointy. Yeah. Anyway, but it's just, it's, again, it's a fun and easy way to make faces that are totally and completely yours and yours alone, as opposed to being some designer's face on your work, which is one of the things that drives me crazy, right? I want to have something that's uniquely yeah. me. Yeah. 
And I love this idea of, so the face is brighter by ha darking out exactly. the Exactly, so, so you just dark out the rest. We could probably yeah. take something, these might be a little bit darker, take an ink pad, let's see. Yeah, oh, yeah there okay. you go, way darker. And then you black out that background. Necessity is the mother of invention. Oh, look at how the yellow becomes a cool Look at how the yellow green. becomes a cool, because there's a resist in there, and there you go. And now you can see, and then we could use some white, you know, or some other kind of pen to highlight, make the whites of her eyes, give her a little more shape, awesome. and it would look like any of those other examples. So even if you have a really cutesy style, this will work for you. If you have more country style, if you want to make like Kelly Ray Roberts style with like the long neck and the tilted head and the wings, <laughs> and the wings. you can totally do that yeah I think you can make a Buddha too I yes, make a Buddha with I it. definitely think you could yeah. <laughs> all right thanks so much Julie you're welcome thank so, you yes this is Julie Faye Van Balzer we are with the crafters workshop workshop <laughs> I'm Noelle Hyman from paperclipping.com